It's an absolute pleasure to be here. The topic for today is epidemiology, etiology, and histology of RCC. I'll try and brief. I'll try to be in, uh, brief, and uh, that would be uh, for the benefit of trainees. So uh, the data in 2018 from European 40 countries uh, does mention about the stand, uh, A standardized incidence rates for, for kidney cancers. It amounts to about 13.3 in both sexes, and in men it is about 18, and females it is about 9. Co counterproductive uh, mortality rates are approximately 4.7 uh, as uh, per year in both the sexes together, and in men it is 7.1, and females it is 2.7. Uh, the, the bracket which I have highlighted here is for the uh, uro-oncology and uh, obviously incidence-wise, prostate stands first, bladder comes next, and then the kidney and similar things happen in mortality rates as well. So the, uh, the, as per the European standards, the most common age group is about 60 to 70 years. Nearly 60% are diagnosed uh, at T1A stage, which is quite good. Male to female ratio is about 1.5. Uh, the U.S. statistics are nearly 3.8 percent of the all the tumors are attributed to kidney cancers. Uh, median age is 64. In last one decade, approximately starting spanning from 2006 to 2015, the incidence is slowly increasing by 0.6 percent per year. Mortality is reducing by around 0.7 percent in year. And most encouraging fact is that uh, in last couple of decades, local uh, the five-year survival both for localized and advanced diseases improved by around four percentage points. So Globocon data around, uh, at the moment in 2018, uh, this, is, uh, this is the statistics from 2018, of course, but the uh, literature about the entire globe is uh, as a, a standardized rates are about 6 for males and 3.1 for females. Uh, similarly, the mortality rates are 4.5 and 1.8. If you can appreciate this, uh, American uh, North America and then followed by majority European countries amount to the uh, maximum uh, incidence rates and similarly maximum mortality rates as well. Uh, same rate, continuing the same global data, Asia and Europe would attribute about one third each of the total number of cases diagnosed for kidney cancer every year across the globe. And unfortunately, Asia would be having a large chunk of 45% mortalities happening with, because of the kidney cancer out of the entire statistics in the world. Uh, coming to the Indian data uh, for the benefit of Indian trainees, uh, we are having a little early age of onset for this disease nearly a decade earlier so the median age stands about 56 uh, unfortunately 30 percent of the people are younger than 50 years which is a harsh reality and only 10 percent are diagnosed in t1a stage majority are diagnosed uh, at later juncture male to female ratio is much higher than the global statistics it's four is to one uh, giving the data about this is this data comes from uh, obviously it, it was assembled in a in tata memorial hospital so it does mention that presentation. Obviously, it's a tertiary referral hospital, so there will be some bias in that. But 40% of the refer referrals are for metastatic setting. Uh, so what's happening in the future? Uh, if you uh, totally in the globe, probably the incidence slowly is uh, going to reduce until 2030. So we at least have prediction until next uh, one decade. But uh, there is a glitch in that the the based upon the socio -demo demographic uh, income, the SDI. Uh, if you can appreciate in this figure, high and middle high SDI countries will have average annual percentage change in negative manner. That means the incidence is reducing. And similarly, uh, exactly opposite to it, low middle and low socioeconomic countries will have AAPC in positive manner. That means the incidence is still going to be increasing until 2030 slowly. Uh, coming to the etiology, smoking obviously has been proven beyond doubt and the dose response relationship has been uh, uh, already established, but to my surprise, actually, uh, within 20 uh, pack years, the incidence or, or the risk doesn't increase much. Uh, that doesn't mean that I'm allowing or asking people to have that, that much of liberty, but obviously, uh, 20 to 40 pack years, the odds ratio is about 1.3 and beyond 40, it's about 1.5. Uh, obesity will be around 1.1. Hypertension obviously has a role uh, varying between 1.4 to 3.2 as the odds ratio. There is a possible role of uh, antihypertensive medicines, thiazides, which has been seen in few retrospective data, but obviously the data is not robust and we can't attribute exactly the etiological uh, correlation. Occupational exposure doesn't stand much of a role and there's no association of uh, coffee, alcohol, or tea. Uh, the insights uh, from the PLACO trial were at the, these group were followed up for renal cell carcinoma as well, and the modifiable risk factors are exactly the same, obesity, hypertension, and smoking in pack years. Non-modified risk factor, of course, stand as an age. Uh, interesting fact is that hypertension amounts to 67% increase in the risk, 
every 10 milligram increase in the systolic and diastolic blood pressure will have certain increase in the number of risk for uh, uh, kidney cancers and diastolic blood pressure uh, is more important than the systolic blood pressure. Uh, last point in the etiology, end-stage renal disease is one of the most important factors for which contributes to these particular cancers because of the association of uh, acquired renal kidney diseases as well as uh, RCs. Nearly 4% of ESRD patients will have uh, tumors happening into their native kidneys, which is nearly 10 times the higher risk over the gen pop. Uh, these are generally in younger males. Uh, it happens bilaterally, multicentric manner. Luckily, these are aggressive, less aggressive tumors. Uh, happening into low grade varieties, more percentage would be papillary variants, less of nodal spread and less of metastasis. And hence the survival, cancer specific survival up, appears to be better with ESRD than non-ESRD. The actual benefit or actual reason for that can be either ESRD or the early detection, uh, people have actually looked into it. And the data in this retrospective analysis uh, in European urology does mention that on multivariate analysis, ESRD doesn't stand as a risk factor, as a significant factor, hence they attribute early detection as the reason for better prognosis in these particular patients. So uh, coming to the histology, WHO, broadly speaking, the, the classification of renal tumors can be renal cell tumors of adult origin or the metanocytic tumors, uh, then the uh, nephroblastic tumors, which generally happen in children, mesenchymal tumors happening in two children and mesenchymal tumor uh, occurring in two adults. Uh, neuroendocrine variety of tumors and metastatic tumors would attribute to smaller percentage, rare events, but uh, they are periodically described. So uh, coming to the histology, I'm going to spend some more time on this particular slide uh, for the benefit of trainees. Uh, majority of, uh, so we will limit the discussion to pure RCCs now. So clear cell RCC, of course, stands as one of the most important uh, etiological factor in this. Uh, nearly 75% occurrence of clear cell variety. Uh, these are... Uh, confined tumors, but there, there is no capsule per se into the, to, to the tumor. The, uh, histology, the, the gross appearance would be golden yellow appearance of the tumor with some area of, of necrosis or hemorrhage. The histology would have lipid-rich ample cytoplasm and hence the name clear cell. The second most common variety is of course the papillary tumor. Uh, these are uh, basophilic cells with scarce cytoplasm. Uh, these tumors have a pseudo capsule uh, the, the, the overall architecture has mi micropapillae and the overall uh, the, the support or the basal membranes of these particular tumors are very flimsy. They don't have a lot of good support around the tumor architecture and uh, hence uh, these tumor have a uh, tendency to have, once the tumor overgrows, it forms hemorrhage, it forms uh, exudate of some proteinaceous, proteinaceous material leading to some osmosis and the fluid starts accumulating inside. Uh, hence, the tumor on gross section appears like a mint mies or uh, the histology wise, uh, these tumors will have uh, some fluid inside, oh, sorry, imaging wise, these tumors will have some fluid inside and they would mimic post uh, 2 f or three cysts. Uh, the other aggressive variety of papillary tumors is type 2 papillary tumors. It's more of eosinophilic over, uh, over the background of uh, papillary 1 tumors, which are basophilic. Uh, coming to the third most common variety, chromophobe tumors. These are all solid tumors and uh, they, they do not have capsule of its own. These, these tumors do not have capsule of the, uh, their own. Then histology wise, uh, they, they are more pale on the cross section and histology wise, they have a perinuclear halo, which is very characteristic of chromophobe tumors. Uh, the reason why they are solid, the, because of the reasons of being solid architecture and homogeneous, they are the differentials for oncocytomas, which are, which are benign tumors and it's difficult to differentiate both these tumors on radiological diagnosis. Uh, the aggressive variants of other other aggressive variants of the renal tumors, collecting duct tumors, these typically happen into collecting ducts and uh, they have a lot of dysmoplasia around. The medullary variety uh, is going to happen in the distal nephrons and there is marked pleomorphism and hyperchromatic nuclei in that. So the initial grading or the formal grading which was described in 1982, they used to include three categories uh, for grading the uh, aggressiveness of the tumor or the biology of the tumor. Uh, which would include nuclear size, nuclear shape, and the status of nucleoli. But with the recent ISUP modifications, uh, they are focusing more into nucleoli for this particular these particular grading. So grade one, uh, there will be uh, either absent or very inconspicuous nuclei. Grade two would be having nucleoli which are seen on which are eosinophilic, but which are well seen on 400 magnification, but not very well seen on 100 magnification. Grade three will be uh, conspicuous on 100 magnification, and grade four will be either giant cells or uh, some sarcomatoid differentials. So if you can just appreciate in this figure, 
the nuclei are become nucleoli are becoming uh, uh, more conspicuous as we go from grade one to four, and the giant cells uh, come into picture in grade four as well. Uh, the point to be learning point to be noted here is Froman grading or a nuclear grading would be relevant for clear cell and papillary tumors. It can't be it can be applied for chromophore variety because there is inherent nuclear RTPI in the chromophore variety, and hence we cannot cannot use the nuclear grade for grading these uh, chromophore variety of tumors. So coming to some familial uh, RCC or familial uh, renal uh, tumors. Um, I have summarized uh, some important uh, familial uh, syndromes out of which with some imaging findings so as to have a good uh, clinical insight uh, for the benefit of trainees. So VHL, it's uh, chromosome 3 renal cell carcinoma happens about 24 to 45%. These majority are clear cell variety of tumors. Uh, the, uh, the, the screening initial starts at the age of 10 years with an ultrasound and beyond 20 years, we need to have a cross-sectional imaging at least one for two years or depending upon that, we have to increase the frequency. Some extra renal manifestations would be retinal angiomas, uh, cerebellar hemangioblastomas, which is well seen here. Uh, the type 2B uh, VHL will have RCC, uh, the, the adrenal uh, ma mass or the pheochromocytomas, and they can also have extra, re extra adrenal presentations. There will be some pancreatic cysts apart from basic renal cysts as well. Uh, and re remaining uh, pancreatic neurotrogan tumors or lymphatic sac tumors is a rare occurrence. The tuberous sclerosis uh, is uh, affiliated to chromosome 9 and 16. Uh, AMLs do happen about in about 80% of the cases, and hence, whenever it is diagnosed, we need to keep them under good uh, monitoring because there is a slightly high propensity of these AMLs to bleed than the normal uh, non tuberous sclerosis uh, AML. So, the stripe size criteria of around 4 cm for the overall tumor size and 5 mm for the aneurysm size is considered for. Uh, decision making about active treatment versus just monitoring these sort of AMLs. So apart from these, uh, these tumors, these uh, syndromes will also have some renal cysts like similar in VHL. Uh, some extra renal manifestations would be giant cell, cell uh, giant cell astrocytomas, uh, retin hematomas, skin manifestations like Ashley spots or shagrin patches, and lymphangiomyomatosis in the lungs, which may lead to sometimes a pneumothorax formation and cardiac rhabdomyomas. So uh, the third, tube, third syndrome would be BHT, birch Q2 gay syndrome, that would be chromosome 17. Folliculin is the gene involved. Uh, the, these uh, tumors will have oncocytomas and a combination of oncocytomas, a, a hybrid oncocytoma, that would be a combination of uh, oncocytomas and uh, the chromophore variety of tumors. So screening again starts at about 20 years, that's a cross-sectional imaging. And characteristic of these particular tumors as an extra renal manifestation would be bivasal lung cyst, uh, which lead to 24% uh, chance of spontaneous pneumothorax. So whenever there is a pneumothorax presentation along with a renal mass, uh, uh, BHT, that should ring a bell, and BHT first followed by tuberous sclerosis, these should be the differential depending upon the criteria. So for diagnosing a BHT uh, syndrome, we need to have one major or two minor criteria. One major would be at least five, five to fibro folliculomas uh, or a proven germline mutation on genetic testing. Or two minor criteria out of three would be multiple bibasilar cysts, which are characteristic of this, along with renal tumor and firstly relative with BHT syndrome. Uh, hereditary papillary RCCs uh, affiliated to chromosome 7, CMAT gene involvement. These are bilateral type 1 papillary RCCs. Of, of course, as we know, papillary RCCs are hypovascular. Papillary, just to summarize, papillary and chromophore would be hypovascular, and the uh, clear cell would be slightly hypervascular or hyperaptinuating. So hypovascular bilateral tumors uh, probably should hint us towards HPRCC. There are luckily no external manifestations in this particular syndrome. Uh, the aggressive variant of papillary is uh, hereditary leomyomatosis and RCC, uh, fumarate hydrotate gene, and chromosome 1 is uh, included in that. Uh, these are slightly aggressive tumors, and uh, they also manifest with cutaneous and uterine leomyomatosis. Uh, apart, apart from these, there are certain other tumors which have familial association with RCCs, for example, worms, uh, uh, which may manifest in adulthood, HNPCC, PTN gene mutations, hyperpyrethroidism, jaw syndromes, and SDH mutation absence uh, syndromes or, or, or uh, involvement, which leads to some uh, RCC formation. So I've typically highlighted these two things, varieties of tumors into red category because they are slightly aggressive. Uh, hence, we uh, cannot go by the size criteria, which is uh, generally applied for all familial tumors, because these tumors are notorious to come back in the, in the same kidney or into different kidney uh, or contralateral kidney. So, uh, generally, the three centimeter criteria is generally applied for a majority of these tumors, but uh, HLRCC and SDH mutation gene associated tumors 
uh, preferably won't have, be eligible for these uh, criteria of three centimeter for active interventions versus monitoring. So uh, a little bit about the aggressive variety of tumors, renal medullary carcinomas, uh, these generally happen in younger males who may have sickle cell hemoglobinopathy in the background. Uh, they generally present with wide lymphadenopathy or metastasis. They are very aggressive and the overall survival is limited to few weeks to few months, unfortunately. The sarcomatide variant is an aggressive variety. It generally is a high grade transformation without being a distinct histological entity. And as we know, in spite of majority of the treatment options, the prognosis is very grave. Uh, similarly, an, an, another aggressive variety called carcinoma of collecting duct of Bellini, uh, they also present with nearly 44% node involvement and 33%, uh, nearly one third would present with metastasis. Uh, the, uh, they're very aggressive and the median overall survival is about 30 months, just over two years. Uh, last word about translocation associated RCC. These are uh, RCCs arising because of the, or RCC is happening because of some translocation related to MITF genes, uh, family genes, that is microphthalmia transcription factor family genes. Uh, two major genes are involved in this uh, are TFE3 and TFEB. The translocations can be 611 or X uh, involving X chromosome, so X3 or X19. Uh, it is said that it is uh, relatively underreported because of the lack of routine genetic testing uh, to, on these specimens. Uh, they are more common in females. The mean age is about 43. Uh, the, they mind you that these uh, genes are also implicated in melanoma. So there may be some association whenever the patient with previous history of some melanoma comes with a kidney mass that should uh, ring a bell and uh, we, we should uh, think of these particular possibilities in mind, especially if it's a younger female. So uh, these tumors would be identified on IHC for confirmation. DFE3, TFEB, cathepsins, HMB would be uh, positive in these particular tumors, unlike standard clear cell papillary or chromophore variety of tumors. I guess uh, that was it. Uh, thank you for the opportunity.